All right, let's see if I can manage to finish this video today. <laughs> this is the third try, and it's because I want to make it short, but as always, I find always a lot of things to talk about. So let's go, let's get into it right now. I think I cracked <laughs> the oxalic vaporization treatment, okay? I've uh, been working uh, for three years trying to see why the recommended dosage and recommended treatment does not work because we know it doesn't. Um, I've been trying for three years, uh, trying different things, and I think I finally got it. So um, three years ago, uh, we know that the one gram does not work, okay? But let, let's, let's try to keep it in order. Um, what is it that we know? So we know that um, Barroa increases in population, especially uh, during the spring flow. So as bees are multiplying, uh, Barroa is doing the same, but exponentially. So for every bee inside the cell, there's four to six Barroa just, just multiplying and those getting into other cells and do the same. And so it is exponential. By the end of the flow, we know that the, we, the, the bees are um, completely parasitized with Maroa. Um, and that is when we start suffering. Because if one of those Baroas or some of those Baroas are virulent, not all of them are. But if some are, by the end of the season, they all are, okay? They, they transmit them from bee to bee. And so uh, when a non-parasitized Baroa uh, mites a bee that is already parasitized, it gets the parasites and blah, 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 okay? So the viruses, so viruses transmit like that. Uh, what else do we know? One gram doesn't work. What else do we know? That the oxalic acid vaporization is a chemical process. Now, being a chemical process for me was the clue. So uh, three years ago, I did the treatments. For the first years, uh, I tried seven treatments. So it was four days, seven repetitions, and that will, and I was doing three grams, okay? So with that, my idea was to get a whole cycle of the bees. So after the 28 days, I know that I hit every single bee in the colony at least once. So that's why the four times seven, okay? Then um, I was sharing this with Dr. Jack Cameron and he told me that um, Randy Oliver was doing the same thing. Well, not the same thing. If you haven't, you gotta go check Randy Oliver Scientific Beekeeping. You have to, you must. Uh, he is also an excellent research. He's a biologist, he is trained. He knows everything he needs to know. He has the resources, the know-how, and the discipline to actually do a great research. So you gotta check him out, okay? So, but Randy was doing it on a larger scale. Uh, more comprehensive. He was doing it in different altitudes, uh, X amount of bees, a complete research. You got to check him out. And his final recommendation was three grams every four days for 10 days. I mean, 10 repetitions. Now, uh, again, let's go back to the beginning. So we know that oxalic acid is a chemical treatment. It is a chemical process. We're talking about sublimation of an organic material, of an organic acid. So I contacted three uh, chemical engineers. Um, they were very curious about what is it that we were using the oxalic acid for. I explained to them how the treatment works, what is it that we're trying to achieve, um, the physiology of the pest, and and so they all immediately, and you know, as soon as they showed them the videos and showed them everything of the treatment, they all say, um, and it was not a group, it was different uh, people at different times. They all say the same thing. You're doing it wrong. You're not doing anything, okay? So why? 
Let's take into account the physiology of the Varroa mite and the mechanical process in which oxalic acid kills the Varroa mite, okay? So the idea is that when you vaporize organic acid, when the organic acid sublimates and go from solid to gas, that oxalic acid gas enters the tracheal branches of Varroa and as it crystallizes, it rips the Varroa from inside. So it's like a death by a thousand daggers, okay? There's no way a Varroa will survive organic acid. That is why, unlike other chemical processes, there is no, Varroa cannot develop a resistance to oxalic acid because it's physical, it just rips them apart. Okay, so that's why organic acid, I believe, is the way to go and also that is in vaporization mode. I also read that organic acid on the dripping mode that they ingest is not so soft for the bee guts. So I'd rather go the vaporization mode. But then again, so I, I ask, even though they're not beekeepers, even though uh, have nothing to do with bees or bee research or anything. I asked them, okay, so tell me why it is it not working? And the answer was simple. One, when they saw the video and they saw the cloud, the oxalic acid cloud that we all want to see when we do the treatment and we started the vaporization and we see that cloud of oxalic acid and we're like, yes, I'm treating my bees. They're gonna be okay, it's gonna be fine, not, okay? So, the process that they explained to me is this. One, it is that the chemical process, the sublimation of oxalic acid happens between 324 degrees Fahrenheit to 375. That's it, that's when the solid organic acid becomes a gas okay anything before 324 it's not doing anything everything after 375 is just burning the organic material it's not sublimating the oxalic acid is just burning it and converting it into co2 and debris chemicals engineers they said okay you're doing it wrong because if you can see the oxalic acid, if you see the cloud, it's no longer a gas. It's not sublimated. It is already in aerosol mode. And aerosol mode, the particles are so big that one, you can see it, and two, they're too big to penetrate or enter the tracheal respiratory system of Varroa. That's why it doesn't work, okay? So maybe, in theory, the one gram in paper and calculations and everything does work because you know one of the chemicals engineer crunched the numbers and blah 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 and he was telling me i was asking them what is the residual formic acid of three grams and all the stuff and so maybe when they were doing the calculations one gram in gas mode will be enough to treat one box of bees maybe what is it that they were not taking, uh, you know, into account? Because I called Beto Pharma, I asked for the person who did the research, I asked him, you know, can you show me the data of how you guys came out to the uh, the one gram thing? And I never heard anything back. So it's, that's fine. Um, the thing is, and I noticed this three years ago when I did the first treatment. Do not treat under 60, uh, degrees Fahrenheit that was my conclusion of that treatment anything under 60 degrees even before the oxalic acid goes into the hive is already crystallizing and you have to go and unclog the vaporizer so when you're unclogging the vaporizer means that even before it left it was already crystallizing so by the time it got there it was mostly aerosol so not doing anything and for the most part we know that there is mites being killed so because we're using larger, larger uh, dosage than one gram. 
the amount of gas that is doing the treatment is not the three grams of oxalic acid. It's a portion, it's, it's just a small portion of those three grams is actually doing the treatment, okay? That's why it took seven, 10 repetitions is because of temperature, okay? After that, three, that was three winters ago. I did the treatment, seven, four. I didn't treat the following winter, and I was going to start treatment this winter in November. Texas is hot, we all know that, and in December, at the end of November, beginning of December, it was 90 degrees. So the day that I was doing the treatment, it was the four treatment for some, five treatment for some other ones, and it was 90 to 92 degrees. I did the treatment, and in some, I just saw a very, very, very diminute, just imperceptible cloud. And I said, what? It is, you know, the vaporizer is just broken, okay? And nothing, so I went and, you know, I checked the cup, no oxalic acid. I went to another hive, absolutely no cloud. And I said, okay, it's definitely broken. I check the cup, empty. So no organic acid. The organic acid went through the uh, sublimation system and I saw no cloud. Did I do the treatment perfectly? Did by chance being in the 92 degrees worked? So that's, that was my bell, okay? So now I had the temperature right. Then I said, okay, I'm gonna complete the seven treatments and I'm gonna, gonna treat for another two years and see what happens, okay? I wrote to Dr. Jan Cameron and I said, okay, I found this, this, and this. This is the development, uh, the difference between the first one and the last treatment. So now I'm gonna do it like this. But in the end of November, I went and attended a presentation by Dr. Zachary Lamas. You got to check this. You have to, you have to see what Dr. Lamas is doing, his research, because for me it was a game changer completely, okay? Check him out. If I start talking about it, I'm gonna stand another 15 minutes. Uh, bottom of the, the, the result of everything after seeing his presentations is, I am going to change my regimen of treatment for June, July, because I'm in Texas. And what is important about that, because you have to adjust it to where the location, to your location, is by July, the flow ends. Usually by July 4 or those weeks, the flow ends. That's it, we enter into a dirt, and that's when, you know, I usually get, uh, harvest my honey on July. <coughs> And that's it, we enter into a dirt, so the girls stop rearing uh, drones. You see, you start seeing that they're kicking the drones out, and, and that's it for the season. And then you have uh, until September, middle of September, October, until you see the full flow. And that is the nature of things, right? Right before the dirt begins, Barua knows he's sprayed very, very well. So what Dr. Lamas found out is that right before they get kicked out, when they stop producing the drone larva, Barroa migrates from the drones into the nurses and the uh, worker brood. So for me, that's it. For me, that's it. Okay, so now I have the temperatures. In June, July, we still, we are over 100 degrees in Texas. So it's gonna be perfect timing perfect temperature for the oxalic acid so the temperature is check and then now I know that most of the mice are phoretic most not everything so it's not a hundred percent but most of the mites are phoretic in the drones so right I, when I see that they start the, the stopping rearing uh, drones I'm gonna start my treatment boom I'm gonna start from there the four times uh, every four days, three grams, seven repetitions. So it's probably gonna be the end of June, uh, beginning of July, 
until the 28 days pass. That's, that's gonna be my bet. I think the timing, the temperature, the phoretic mice that uh, Dr. Uh, Lamas discover, uh, try to hit those mites before they migrate into the worker brood and nurse bees. If I time it right, the efficacy of the treatment is gonna be off the charts, okay? Because it is a dirt, the girls are, the girls are gonna try to brood less and less. There's, they're not gonna brood too much because of the dirt. So Barroa is stranded. We killed the majority because they were foretic in the drones and now they don't have enough brood to actually multiply it exponentially as they did in, in spring. So um, by, when, by the time that the girls start rearing the bees, they're gonna survive through the winter. And in September, October, November, there's not gonna be much might. There's gonna be barely anything. They're not gonna be rearing any, any drones only the bigger, stronger hives possibly will do. But there's not gonna be that much. And so that is the only treatment that I'm gonna do this year. That's it, I'm not gonna do anything else. And three years ago when I did the 4-7, only in that yard, only two out of 30 hives collapsed because of Barroa. After the 4-7, two out of 30, 6%. Now, I'm gonna do this, this summer, and I'm not gonna treat for another two years, and then I'll see, I'll see. You know, the first, the first test is gonna be winter, how good they winterize, and how is it gonna be in spring? Because the spring is when Barroa start, you know, kicking up again, right? So let's see, let's see what's gonna happen, but I'm pretty sure that I, the, the combination of these two temperature and timing is gonna be what is gonna make it, uh, you know, all efficient. So stay tuned, 2024 is gonna be the year that I put it to the test and I'll let you know. Alrighty.